Iran in an emergency situation in order to right the ship? Well, I guess my answer would be two wrongs don't make a right. I mean, I agree. No, I understand that, but we're not dealing with with a uh, with an idea anymore. It's not a theory. This is a country in grave danger. We're heading towards an iceberg, and unless someone reverses course rapidly, we're going to hit that iceberg. And whether he has to go through the niceties that you are referring to is a question that's worthy of debate. And I would say that the constitutional system has been hijacked by Obama and the Soviets who have ruined America. How would you do it? If, it, if you turn it back to Congress, how long would it take to do anything? How long would it take for Trump to do anything if he wanted to go down the line of doing it 100% the way you want it done? It wouldn't be quick, that's for sure. I mean, uh, his term will be four years. All right, so this is the problem with being a purist. And this is the problem with listening to purists. Purists live in a dream world. And that's why purists usually get run over and become roadkill is because the folks on the other side of the aisle don't live in a dream world. They're very vicious, they're ruthless, and they will run you over and destroy you. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, is that we happen to need a buccaneer to save America. Donald Trump meets the bill for me. I know maybe you don't want to hear it, because it doesn't meet the protocols of the, of, uh, of the Pope of conservatism, whoever that may be. How can you sit and hold people up to some storybook ideal of what a conservative should be when we're living in a state of America that's in great decline. So that's my answer. I hope that you don't go away mad, but that you continue to listen to the show. 855 is the phone number. I invite you to call. That's one open line. Let's go to Washington, D.C. Diane on WMAL, what's your question or comment? Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, thank you. Um... I want to speak on behalf of the uh, uh, liberalism as a mental disorder, and a, a person that came to mind was George Soros with respect to the hedge fund, uh, being a hedge fund manager and using our capitalist society to destroy our nation versus someone like you who's devoted to being an honorable, and I don't mean to embarrass you by saying so, but I'm being honest about it, uh, a talk show host who's, who is... It, has a certain degree of nobility to, to wants to save our nation, and we're in great peril. And it doesn't matter how conservative uh, people are or think they are, we're in deep trouble, and we need someone like Donald Trump. So thank you. Yes, for we do. Every day. Thank you for calling. I, look, I'm not going to say I don't appreciate what you said. I do. But the thing is, we're in desperate, desperate shape in the country because the Stalinist left has gone around the checks and balances that we all hold so dear. How do you right a ship that's heading straight at the iceberg unless you grab the wheel without asking permission? I guess that's what I'm saying. If you see an insane captain on the bridge of a ship and he's heading right to an iceberg, do you ask his permission to take control of the wheel once you can? Or do you knock him out of the way and grab the wheel and turn the ship uh, in the right direction before all is lost. Back in a minute. Pressing down on me. Pressing down on you. No man has fallen. Rug, sex, and rock and roll. Worked very well for him. Yeah, sitting and watching the world go around. New poll coming out tomorrow will be showing Clinton in deep trouble in New Hampshire. Deep trouble in New Hampshire against old Colonel Sanders' uh, long-lost brother, Bernie. Now, although Colonel Sanders comes from a different uh, background than Bernie Sanders, and although Colonel Sanders provides and did provide a very useful product, while his long-lost cousin Bernie provides nothing but hot air, Sanders has a significant lead over Hillary Clinton, which shows you that the entire Democrat machine is in trouble. I mean, if Sanders is leading Hillary, it just shows you what the whole Democrat story is about. Everyone knows that they're not the majority of opinion. Everyone knows that. It's this cabal, the Soviet government media complex that I've been warning you about that leads you to believe things that are false. They love Hillary. No one loves Hillary. 
She has a disastrous following, except amongst the very small coterie of followers. The media is in love with her, and they're in love with the commie, Bernie. And I wish to God that Bernie wins the primaries. Because there's no question in my mind in a head-to-head -head debate, Trump wipes the floor with uh, uh, Sanders. It's that simple. And if there was a, a popular vote, it's 75, 78 for Trump to the commie. Because America doesn't want to go to the Soviet Union. We've been there and come back from the brink. And most immigrants want to make a living. Most immigrants dream of the American dream. Bernie Sanders offers the opposite. Bernie Sanders offers the Soviet dream of the government running and ruining your life. Donald Trump is the opposite. And I think that most immigrants want to make it in America. I tell you, I know it. what I think. I know what they want. They want to buy a house. They want to own a nice pickup truck. They want to send their kids to a school where they won't get beaten up or killed on the way or to or from school. They want law and order. And Bernie Sanders is the opposite of that. It's that simple. I mean, uh, you know, I don't need anyone to tell me what, what's real. And as far as immigration goes, everybody wants it stopped dead in its tracks. Everyone. Everyone wants the doors slammed shut because they see what's going on with the revolution in Europe right now. And they understand that they don't want the rapes, the kidnappings, the murders that are being conducted on a too regular basis in Europe. As far as Muslims, well, it's a tough one, but the fact of the matter is it, there's a big question mark over the immigration uh, situation with regard to Islam. It's a little up in the air as to what all of them come here to simply practice their religion. Let's put it to you that way. We know it's not true. We know that the good percentage, even if it's 1%, let's say a small, tiny percentage, a very tiny percentage of 1 billion Muslims or 1% of 1 billion, do the math. That's a big number. Uh, don't practice Islam the way we're told it, that they should. They practice a rather primitive view of Islam, which calls for the conversion or killing of the infidel. How do I know it? Wake up. Wake up and smell the gunite. And I don't mean the gunite in the pools. Wake up and smell the gunite as the pools fly in the air from the C4 explosive. You get what I'm saying. Let's not be children about this. This is life and death. Even liberal uh, Paris, liberal France, that is, even the socialist who runs France, for God's sakes, is left-wing as they come. Even he had the police break down the doors of mosques. Even he is deporting the radical imams. Even he understands that there's a limit to their good nature. So how can a liberal not understand that things have changed and they can't stick to their doxies forever? And that's what I'm trying to tell you. The left-wing revolution has destroyed the fabric of American society. And maybe people who were sexually promiscuous felt that that was necessary in order to have to do it in the road. See, a lot of this came from the sexual uh, movement, the sexual liberation movement of the 60s, because that's where it started. And I've talked about it. You don't have to be a genius to understand where this flowed from and where it came from and the paranoia that the rigid church, the rigid Christians, the rigid marriage... Uh, is what would keep people from enjoying themselves and that conservatives were seen sort of as the cop between hedonism and uh, repression, in plain English. And anyone who is seen as a conservative now to Hollywood and the media is considered a, someone who represses your sexual freedom. Let's put it all in a sexual context because this all began with the sexual revolution. And we were warned that the way the communists would break down the walls of our society would be through the sexual revolution. Now move it forward 40 to 50 years and look where the sexual revolution has led. Is it not time to think about it more carefully? That not all things are equal and not all things should revolve around your hedonistic impulses? That sometimes, let us say, controlling yourself is more important than expressing yourself in certain areas? And that by controlling yourself, you might just control the society? for the better? Is it possible to consider that unlimited freedom is suicide? Just as unlimited repression is suicide? I mean, I talked earlier about the Soviet system. That's unlimited repression, right? We're all against unlimited repression. 
That's Stalin's Soviet Union, unlimited repression. Well, the opposite of that is America today with unlimited sexual freedom. They're both equally damaging to the social order, and we need someone to strike the balance. And that's all I have to say on this subject. I don't want to get into the details of what I mean by that. I figure you can figure it out for yourself. When I come back, live right on the Savage Nation for your calls and comments. We have great calls. We have two open lines at 855 407 If you care to talk about the Trump interview or what I just said about the sexual revolution, we're open for business on the Savage Nation. I still haven't gotten to the other stuff that I wanted to get to, some of the great sound. Tomorrow, of course, it's the State of the Union Address, which I cannot tolerate. I hope it's not during the show. The applause and the this and the that, I, I don't want to really listen to it. He's going to have an empty chair for a, a Syrian refugee. You hear this? You talk about a charade. This is a charade within a charade. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. It is the Savage Nation. So in my last monologue, I talked about sexual liberation leading to the state we're in in the society, not related directly to the sexual liberation, but how sexual liberation led to the relaxing of virtually all laws and rules in the society that have led us to the sad state where we are literally a broken society. So I'm not saying let's go back to the 50s or something like that. But come to understand that there are facts related to behavior in a society. And there's a new finding from the CDC, which is instead of protecting us from diseases, is publishing such uh, rubbish as this. American sex lives, women more likely to have same-sex experience, according to the CDC. This is what they're interested in. Sex with the opposite sex clearly dominates. But that's not the entire story we read, since even many identifying as homosexual also have had opposite sex sex, whatever that means. And so ask yourself why, with an interview of roughly 100,000, 10,000 people ages 18 to 44, you see the numbers showing a great increase in human sexuality of woman to woman. Is that the mark of a healthier society, do you think? Is that the direction a society that is going to thrive would be going? I don't think so. Dare I say I pretty much know so? Dare I say the birth rate would indicate I am correct? Now, <clears throat> there's a soundbite from last night's Golden Globes that kind of says it all. Uh, we didn't get the soundbite in the children part of it. I read it, actually, where this guy, Ricky Gervais, was selected for a number of reasons, one of which is that he said... He didn't think he should get married uh, and make allegiance to an, uh, to an invisible God. He said that because the, he doesn't exist. Then he said, we decided, my partner and I, not to have children after so many years together because we didn't want to devote 16 years of our lives to taking care of them. This is the nihilism I'm talking about that makes Hollywood run. And this is why the movies that they make are generally um, antithetical to the nature of a society that wants to survive. Now, if that's too judgmental for you, I apologize in advance. Women are almost three times as likely to report same-sex intimacy as men. Interesting. Why is that happening in our society today? Uh, I'll let you think about that. Or what does it have to do with the breakdown of our borders, language, and culture? I'll let you think about that. How could the Centers for Disease Control study a thing like this? This is something for Oprah, not the CDC. But this is an example of the meltdown of our science as well, the meltdown of medicine in America. And I want to go back again to where this is all coming from and where it is leaving, where, where it is leading us. But at the risk of boring you, I won't do so. Let me instead go to some of the other sound that the guys who do this stuff for me put together. And I want to get away from the Golden Globes. Oh, here it is. Matt Damon, who is perhaps the most overrated actor in American history, one of the most crazed leftists in the history of, of Hollywood, amongst crazed leftists, 
in clip number 11. It's nothing new. Actors going and <clears throat> seeking 